go back. Looks like they gave up. I'm getting real tired of this, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, they were plenty mad when I beat the big boy in arm wrestling. And one day that temper and that big mouth of yours can get you in deep trouble. I haven't made the trouble I can't get out of. I've run these horses long enough. Set up camp out a mile or two. One dozen eggs, fresh as they come. Thank you, Mrs. Evans. Chloe on. Sheriff Holden, what brings you out here? Making my rounds, thought I'd look in on you and Cassie. We're fine. Would you like some cool water? No, still got ground to cover. Looks like some repairs are in order. We'll get to them. I still don't need any hired help. Good enough. And your visits are always welcome. Elbow's been throbbing some. Looks like a storm's blowing in. Really? It's awfully sunny, Sheriff. Elbow never lies. Could be a doozy. I batten down the hatches. Yeah. What are you cooking up for supper? There's plenty of game around here. Why don't you get off your duff and go check the menu? The California hills are filled with gold. When we hit our big strike, I'm going to take my gold up to Oregon, buy myself a ranch the size of Delaware. Huh? Find me a pretty little wife, got a family. What about you? I'll catch one of them steamers out of San Francisco. Head on up to China. China? What's in China? I just want to see that great big wall of theirs. And after that, who knows? You can go hunting or I got to do everything. Yeah, you, know, you sound like my ma. Best we built a shelter. You're always looking out for me, like a mother hen. Yeah, well, somebody got to. You do what you want. I'll be fine sleeping under the stars. And when we strike a bitch, I'm going to have a butler bring up my food for me. in the garden. Don't be in a huff. I finished up in the garden, and I went and put flowers on Ma and Pa's graves, and I know it sounds silly, but I stayed and talked to them for a while. Lost track of time. It's not silly. I talk to them, too. You do? Of course I do. Looks like there's a storm coming. We best gather the laundry, get the livestock in the barn. That. What I meant was, is the barn holding up? It's holding its ground. How can you just sit there calmly sewing when the world outside is falling apart? I promise Mrs. Banks I get the skirt to her by tomorrow. What if it's still raining? Finish drying the dishes. It'll get your mind off of things. <sighs> Cassie, you best sweep that up. I'm sorry. I'll be more careful. The thunder startled me. The garden is a mess, but we can salvage the tomatoes and squash. It'll take some time to get it back in shape. 
a good thing you put the livestock in the barn last night. Well, at least only the chickens got out. <sighs> Where do we start? We'll feed in the barn, we'll gather the chickens, then we can go into town so I can get paid on my work for Mrs. Banks' skirt. What about putting this place back in order? First things first. We can go into town and get some new fence posts at the hardware. At least I could stay and start cleaning up the garden. Cassie, you're coming with me. Ellen, you are my sister, not my mother. And? It's not nice for big sisters to order their little sisters around. All right, Cassie. Would you care to accompany me to town today? I would love to. Can we get some apple pie at Millie's? When we're finished taking care of business. Cassie Barlow, you can be one stubborn young lady. I am your sister. I'll gather the chickens. Last one. Now, can we go to Millie's? Well, I guess you earned it. <laughs> Come on, let's go get some apple pie. Ellen, Cassie, not used to seeing you two days in a row. Well, Sheriff, it looks like your elbow was right again. Well, my elbow never fails me when it comes to a storm. How'd your place weather it? It did considerable damage. Maybe now you'll be looking for a hired man. I could use some help around the place. I can pay a proper wage. You've been needing some help for some time now. And I suppose so. Trouble is, all the able-bodied men got gold fever and took off for California. But I'll have to remind you of that. Sorry. Didn't mean to open up an old wound about Jake. That wound is long healed. Well, I'll certainly keep my eyes and ears open. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Cafe, homestyle cooking. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. Ladies, good day. We're here to eat. No trouble. You ladies like anything else? No, thank you, Millie. Oh. Where's Rose? Oh, she just ran out to get some flowers. She should be back any time. Millie, I want to catch up on the town gossip. You have time to sit down? No, as soon as Rose gets back to mind the store. Well, Trinity sure has some good-looking women, folk. Is there something I can get you, young man? A hot meal. A uh, good hot meal. We've been traveling a long time. I'm going to do most of the cooking. Cassie, quit staring. It's not polite. Well, the special today is chicken and dumplings. Sounds real good. Yeah, I'll, uh... I'll take two orders. All right, three orders of the special. Anything to drink? Water. Fine. Thank you. All right. Well, this sure seems like a real quiet town. <laughs> I hate to be stuck here. Well, a lot of people like living like that. Yeah, well, not me. Excitement's what I crave. Ladies, good day to you. Uh, I don't mean to be rude. My name is Daniel Whitaker. Well, what are your names? <clears throat> well, don't that just say it all, hmm? I'm being real nice, and these ladies are being rude. How about we just eat and get out of here? 
You know, I'm being real friendly like to you women, and I can't even get a simple hello in return. Hello. Excuse me? You said you wanted a hello. I gave you one. I wanted it from these ladies. Well, it seems they don't want conversation with you. Well, you two ought to mind your own business. Now, uh, ladies, you don't have to go nowhere. Daniel, we ain't looking for no trouble. No, we're not. It seems like these two boys are. No, we ain't looking for trouble. But well, if you insist, we can step outside. Look at it this way. Walk away now, and you don't get hurt. John, Samuel, what is going on? What's it gonna be? The streets? Walk away. Stop it! <laughs> Punch. In fact, this little scatter shot ain't too choosy. She might just get all of you. Put your hands up and sit down. The sheriff, these two. Sit, sit. Millicent! I can know what happened here. Well, I was in the kitchen. Ellen came to get me and came out just as fight started. Well, let's get this sorted out, boys. Step inside, gentlemen. Our horses are tied up on the street. Don't go fretting about your horses. I'll see they end up at the stables. Of course, it'll cost you for board. Pick a bunk. <sighs> Not sure how this is real fair, Sheriff. Those two boys are just as guilty as we were. Witnesses say your friend here threw the first punch. Well, they provoked me. Is that all you have to say? What about you? What do you got to say for yourself? Never did get a chance to eat. A little hungry. I'll order you up some food for Millie's. If she'll feed you after what happened. I'm much obliged, Sheriff. Never did get a chance to eat? That's all you got to say? We just got railroaded. You caused this. Again, and you know it. Next big wind, and this is coming down. That's why we'll have to get the newest post in before then. You and me aren't so good at digging post holes. We'll learn. Grab the hammer and nails. We'll get the plank up so we can get the horses back in the corral. Why did God bring such a terrible storm on us? Pa used to say the good Lord and the devil got credit for things they had nothing to do with. Sometimes things just happen, natural course of events. Sometimes it's all so confounding. That's why we have to have the faith of a child. Sure was exciting at Millie's today. I guess you could call it that. What else would you call it? Crude and rude behavior. Let's get the plank up. Mom made this for the prisoners. Can go on in there, harmless. Hello there, little lady. 
You are? I'm Rose. I'm Millie's daughter. Oh. Oh, that smells tasty, Rose. You know, Mom was mighty mad at you two for wrecking her place, but she decided to make that up for you anyways. Said it was the Christian thing to do. Thank you. We're very grateful. Thank you, Rose. Well, one good thing. Got our chicken and dumplings. You boys want some water, you can call the night deputy. When you're finished with your food, slide the plates under the door. I'll see you in the morning. Hey, Sheriff. What's gonna happen to us? Depends. Depends on what? You plead guilty. You pay the assessed damages plus the fine. What are the damages? I haven't calculated that yet. The window's boarded up. I have no idea how much new glass and repairs will cost, plus a table, chair or two. Yeah, well, we're pleading not guilty. Fine. When the judge hits town, we'll hold a hearing in the jail. When the judge hits town? Yeah, circuit judge. Covers all the counties. Should be back here in about 30 days. I ain't staying in this jail for a month. Well, then you best plead guilty. Well, that ain't justice. I, I don't know what that is, but it sure ain't justice. We'll plead guilty. No, we're not. Well, I see you boys need some time to talk it over. Take the night. This ain't fair, Clark, and we're not pleading guilty. He did throw the first punch. We got about $3 between us, and that won't even cover a new window. Well, maybe we can work it off. Not me, old buddy. I got bigger and better things to do, places to go, things to see. In case you had noticed, we're in a jail cell. Well, there ain't a jail built I can't bust out of. Neither one of them's ever been locked up before. What are you talking about? You got no imagination, Clark. You never did. Part of your charm, I guess. Just, just eat your food and go to bed. Shoot you. That's not too late and come with me. You really think you're gonna get away with this? Use your head for once and let's pay our debt. We didn't come this far just so we could sit behind bars. If we don't get out of here now, we're never gonna make it to California. Grow up and be a man. Good luck, Clark. Look me up when you get out west. If you ever make it that far.
gathered the eggs. The hens didn't do so well laying. Maybe the storm scared them. They'll settle down. Do you want some help in the garden? That would be great. You know, if we made the garden bigger, we could grow more stuff to sell. We could, after we fix the shingles on the roof of the house and repair the barn door. And get the new corral posts up. <laughs> we weren't this close when Pa was alive, were we? No. Why do you think that is? I suppose it's the age difference. And I was caught up in the trifles that tend to divert a young woman. You mean Jake? Yes, Jake. Do you miss him? I try not to think of it. It's been over two years and haven't heard a word from him. Do you think he's dead? I don't know. Well, if he wasn't dead, he would have written or sent some kind of word from the gold fields. We parted on disagreeable terms. You part that way with a loved one, it tends to make any loss more grievous. Was he your true love? You need years with someone to know such a thing. True love is born of experience, not fairy dust. Do you think I'll find my true love? Yes, you will. But first, I need your help clearing this garden. Say for yourself. Well, I went back to check on him. The cell door was open. One was gone, the other one was just sitting there. Excuse me. I don't know how it happened. I'll tell you how it happened. You fell asleep and a prisoner escaped using a dinner fork. I had to lock you up in his place. Get out of here. I'll figure out what to do with you later. Well, Mr. Clark Davis, looks like you're on your own. Here, so. Mr. Whitaker. Skipped over the stable, broke in, took his horse, and beat it out of town. Sounds about right. Don't suppose you know anything about this. I'm here, aren't I? Yes, you are. I was sleeping. You and my deputy both. I woke up. Daniel's fooling with the lock. I tried to talk him out of it. I suppose you're going after him now? Wasting my time. Just end up on the wrong side of the law someplace else. The devil don't get him first. I will put his name out on the wire, though. We've been friends since childhood. I'd be careful who I call friend. Well, I pled guilty. Now what? Fine for public nuisance is ten dollars, and pairs of millies will probably be about thirty. Got dollar fifty. That'll cover about three weeks board on your horse over at this table. We'll go get you some breakfast until we stay in here. Sheriff, wait. What is it now? Isn't there some way I could work it off? Can I have a word with you? I'd like to run something by you concerning this young man. I'm listening. Sit. So what's this all about? Where's the other one? Slipped out last night while my deputy was sleeping. Came in this morning, and this one is just sitting there. The door's wide open. Now, why do you suppose he didn't leave? I believe he is a responsible young man who would like to do right by you and the town. In fact, that's what I came to talk to you about. I'm still listening. Won't be much further now. 
You mind if I ask where we're going? Nope. No, you don't mind or no, don't ask? Barlow Farm. Ellen Barlow lives there with her sister Cassie. They've been looking for some hired help. Can't pay much, but it'll suit your needs paying off what you owe. Two women living alone? Pa died last winter, mom died giving birth to Cassie. You're trusting me not to run. You give me your word you stay. Keep my word on it. Your word's good enough for me. But if you run, I will find you. And I may have to shoot you. camp up there. Close to work out of the ladies' hair. Plenty of game up there you'll make do. Ellen! Cassie! <laughs> Ellen, it's Sheriff Holden. Hello, Sheriff. Good day to you, Sheriff. Ellen? That bullet with the Sheriff is the one that was in the fight at Millie's. Yes, it seems so. Sheriff, what can we do for you today? What I can do for you. Ellen Barlow, Cassie Barlow, meet Clark Davis. Solution to your hired hand problem. Sheriff Holden, why don't you step down so we can talk in private? Yes, ma'am. Cassie? Make sure you don't run off. <sighs> you and those other fellas sure tore up Millie's place. Yeah, we sure did. I'm really sorry about that. It was a grand fight. Grandest fight I ever saw. In fact, the only fight I ever saw. Rose, too. Rose is Millie's daughter. Cassie, hold the horse. Stop talking. Why'd you bring that criminal here? He's not a criminal. Then what is he? He's an able bodied man who will work for you to pay off Millie and the law. He started a brawl. He can't be trusted. First of all, he did not start the brawl. Millie and you said so. That is beside the point. No, it is not beside the point. And secondly, I'm a damn good judge of human nature, and that boy has a good, solid character. You have only known him for a day. The other one broke out of jail and took off. This one stayed to face the music. That tells me a lot about his character. We'll find someone else. Ellen Barlow, you are as stubborn as your old man. Besides, there is no one else. And you sorely need him. Fine. But only on a trial basis. One week at a time. Minus a dollar fifty he already paid. He owes thirty-eight fifty. Month's wages ought to cover that debt. Told him he could camp up there on the hill. Thank you, Cassie. Welcome, Sheriff. You leaving? Dear so. Don't you worry, I'll be back to check on you from time to time. Goodbye, Sheriff. Stay out of trouble, Cassie. You too, Sheriff. Cassie. Barlow, I just want to tell you it's a pleasure to meet you, and uh, I really appreciate this job opportunity. Look, Mr. What's your name? That's Davis. Clark Davis. Mr. Davis, I truly do not feel comfortable having the likes of you around, but we need some hired help, and you're all there seems to be. The likes of me? I heard your friend say you were going to the gold fields. Is there something wrong with that? Dreamers, chasing rainbows, looking for gold, get rich quick. Well, there's gold to be found. Look, if you're going to work here, you best get started. Half day's already gone. If I'm going to pay you a daily wage, I expect a full day's work. Yes, ma'am, you'll get a full day's work. Just tell me where to start. Well, there's plenty that needs attention. You can start by fixing the barn door. OK. <sighs> She's not so ornery once you get to know her. I might not live long enough to get to know her, then. There's tools and a ladder in the barn, and the lumber's out back. Come on, I'll show you, Mr. Davis. I'll just call me Clark. Mr. Davis and my Paul. You best be careful up there. I will. Thanks for the advice. You sure you know what you're doing? Guess you're gonna find out. Cassie? Would you come here, please? <sighs> Gotta go see what she wants. <sighs> T 
you need me? Of course I need you. But I'm helping with the barn door. Come on inside the house. Do you want to talk about something? I think it's better if we maintain a distance from him until we get to know him. <laughs> How do we get to know him if we maintain a distance? We know nothing about him except he started a fight and he got thrown in jail. Now please, just stay away from him for now. I best get back. He may need my help. Cassandra May, did you hear a word I said? Every word, Ellen Louise. Hope so. Sometimes I have to remind Ellen that she is my sister and not my mother. She's concerned for you. I can take care of myself. Oh, yes, ma'am, I'm sure you can. Heading to California. That sounds so very exciting. Your sister don't seem to think so. That's because of Jake. Jake? Jake Weller. He was Ellen's sweetheart. Moved to California with gold fever about two years ago. He wanted her to pack up and go with him, but she didn't want that. Yeah, what happened to him? Don't know. Haven't heard a word from him. Well, it could prejudice someone against their pursuit of gold. Yes, sir, it could. She has very hard feelings against it, too. Yeah, seems so. Hey, would you grab that two by four and slide it right under this door? Thank you. You're a real big help. Really? Really. So far. It's working. We ought to stand on the hinges. That's the important part. Cassie, we need to take my mend into town and deliver it. Go pack the wagon and get ready to go. Can't I stay here? I thought we'd go buy Millie's for lunch. You can catch up with Rose. I'm going. I'll hitch the team. Well, looks like you fixed it. Seems like it. Can I give you a hand with that team? No, that won't be necessary. I can manage on my own. What do you have in mind next? Crowl. One of the posts is rotted out. Other three need mending. New posts are behind the barn, and all the tools you'll need are inside the barn. I'll get right on it. Me and Rose are going to the dry goods store. Rose and I. All right, Rose and I are going to the dry goods store. And please remember to see if my gang of materials come in. You be back in time for the supper rush? Yes, ma'am. Thanks. I have to admit, that fight was pretty exciting. Oh, I don't know. Take it you have a hired hand working for you now? Trial basis, one week at a time. I don't know how I feel about trusting a man who gets in a fight. Oh, well, Sheriff brought him by here. Seemed like a pretty solid fella. We'll see. And he's not too disagreeable to look at. <laughs> Millie, please. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. Oh, of course you haven't.
Let your good and perfect will be done in Cassie's life. Let no one stand in your way. Not even me. <laughs> good night, Ma. Good night, Pa. Good morning, Miss Barlow. Good morning. When you're finished with that post, Mr. Mr. Davis, don't forget the other three that are loose. I won't forget. Miss Barlow. Yes? You know, I never intended on being here. If I could have repaid that debt, I would have. But I gave the sheriff my word I would see this through. Your point is? As long as I'm here, I'm gonna be civil to you. All I ask is you do the same in return. I am being civil with you, Mr. Davis. He's a real hard worker, ain't he? Isn't he? He has motive to be. Once he pays off his debt, he'll be on his way. It's not like the other gold diggers we've met. They're all the same. After fortune and adventure. He hums while he works. Pa was always humming while he was working. Does this fella remind you of Pa? No. I was just wondering. best cook in the whole county, next to Millie. Of course, you know Millie's place real well. Yeah, I'm afraid I do. Thank you, Cassie. This looks really good. I appreciate it. If you need a drink, there's a tin hanging from the pump. <sighs> this post is solid. You're doing a real dandy job. Dandy is a dandelion. What? My pa used to say that all the time. I've never heard anyone else say that before. Yeah, I'd heard he had passed on. I'm really sorry to hear that. No, it's all right. It's good to hear it again. Cassie, when you're finished, I need you. She just can't seem to get on without me. It's good to be needed. Cassie, now, please. I have to go. Go on inside and put this on. I took out the ham song. Why? Because you're getting so tall, the dress is looking too short. And I always want you to look your best. Besides, the dance is coming up. Forgot about that. You know, Cassie's right. You're a real good cook. <laughs> Thank you. get another storm. If the body was camped outside, it sure would be miserable. Is that your way of saying we should allow Mr. Davis to move to shelter? Oh, do you think so? <laughs> your concern for his well-being, it's duly noted. Is that a no? Yes. Now, turn around. You can see the back. <sighs> Will you think about it? Would you hold still? Turn 
turned out to be quite the farmer. <laughs> I didn't hear you right up. My grandpa was half Osage. He'd sneak up on a rabbit, grab it by the ears with one hand. You just riding by? Nope. Rode out to check on you like I said I would. You holding up all right? Uh, yes, sir. Ellen's a tad pushy and a bit headstrong, but she's a good person. She's guilty on the first two counts, but I hadn't seen the nice part yet. If you do, Cal's got a heavy burden, what was keeping this place going and raising Cassie. Yes, sir. Well, I'm still here, so you can rest easy. I knew you were a man of your work. But I never rest easy. You'll be seeing me again. I'm counting on it. Got an answer back on that wire I sent out on Daniel Whitaker. Turns out he got himself arrested for rustling a few counties west of here. Are they gonna hang him? Could be. Funny how life is. If you'd been with him, you could be facing the news. But here you are. Yeah, here I am. You make the best apple pie this side of the Mississippi. What's wrong with my apple pie? Nothing. It just comes second to Millie's. You are too kind. So how's your hired hand doing? He allows me to help, and he treats me like an adult. Unlike someone else I know. He seems to be a hard worker. Ellen's being kind of ornery with him. He works for us. We're not meant to be his friend. Well, you can be kind of ornery with a lot of folks. Well, some folks deserve it. the corral. A couple more plants, it'll be there. I'm gonna go pick wildflowers in the meadow. Maybe one day you can pick some for me. Sure, just tell me when. Ms. Barlow, how are you? Fine. You do good work. Thank you. My pa taught me a lot about carpentry. Coming in real handy around here. So you have a trade, yet you decide to waste your life on trivial pursuits. <laughs> I guess you just got me all figured out, don't you, Miss Barlow? Well, I don't understand how a man can leave his family and his home and travel clear across the country in pursuit of a few little rocks, no matter how much they're worth. Well, I think some men are just in pursuit of a better life. Others want a shortcut. I was in it for the adventure. So, what's next? After you leave here. Probably keep heading west. Catch a steamer out of San Francisco. Head on over to China. China? New adventure. New places, new people. It doesn't sound like you have any plans to settle down anytime soon. One day I would like to settle down. Have family. I've been laying real good since you got here. I think they like you. Yeah? Guess that makes me a regular old rooster, huh? There's a dance in town this Saturday. Never been to a dance. Oh, there's plenty of good food, socializing, and music. Are you and your sister going? Never miss it. Maybe you could go with us? You have to ask Ellen that. Ask Ellen what? Well, I'm waiting. Could he go to the dance with us? Well, if he wants to, all right. No, oh, that's all right. I, uh, I don't have any fancy clothes anyway. I think we could find him a suit to wear. Shut the 
suit looks all right. Looks better than all right. Fits you better than it did Pa. You look beautiful. I haven't worn this dress in over two years. Not since Jake left. You can't see tell me about him. She can't keep her mouth shut to save her soul. She's really very fetching. I took it out of the closet just for today. Ellen, you all slicked up. There'll be no trouble here, boys. Oh, no, we, we ain't looking for any trouble, Sheriff. Ain't that right, John? No, nah, just commenting on how different he looks. What is it that you boys want? I just wanted to shake this fella's hand. And to tell him we feel partially responsible for his trouble. Hey, you mean that? A word on it. Bygones are bygones. Enjoy the dance. You do look very spiffy. Let's dance. John, would you be a dear and get me a punch? My pleasure. Ellen? No, thanks. I'm fine. So, will we be seeing Mr. Davis at services tomorrow? I mentioned it to him on the way here. Seems he's not a spiritual man. Oh, my. That's too bad. Do you find him handsome? You know I do. <laughs> I find him passable at best. <laughs> okay, slightly more <laughs> than passable. <laughs> He's a hard worker, good craftsman, seemingly of pleasant nature. He's got a good spirit. Just needs a little cultivating. And he'll be leaving soon. For the dance, kind sir. My pleasure, madam. <laughs> it's a fine dancing out there, Mr. Davis. <laughs> you should dance with him, Ellen. Now, Cassie, normally the fella asks the gal to dance. Well, ask her. May I have this dance? Mm, you may. Mm. I'm gonna go find Rose. Make a fine looking couple. That yeah, they do. Now, Millie, why don't you go playing Cupid? That boy is set on leaving. We'll see. Cassie's so eager to grow up. I can remember wanting to grow up. Have you? I think so. <laughs> I know what I want now. So many of the things that I thought were the most important in the world, well, they turned out not to be. I owe you an apology. I don't think so. When you first came into our lives, I prejudged you. But you're not the person I believed you to be. I can't do that. <laughs> Let me finish. I feel like... I'm getting to know you. The real you, not my perception of you. You know, I like you. I like you too. Team hitched up. Figured y'all was heading off to church. We don't have a church in the usual sense. Services are held outside in the common area. I see. 
Well, I invited you once before, and I shall do it again. Would you care to join us? I do appreciate the offer, but I think I'm going to stay here and tend to the garden. We could all use an ounce of faith. Ms. Barlow, I'm not even sure if I know what that word means. Faith means believing in something greater than oneself. A higher power. Well, if it's all the same, I think I'll spend my day doing something a little more constructive. Worship is constructive, Mr. Davis. It's the most important work of all. Well, it's okay with you. We'll just agree to disagree on that one. But I do appreciate the offer of the dance. You're welcome. Please, in the wagon. I don't want to be late. We always have a potluck after services. You'll have to scrounge for your lunch. I'll make do. Davis? Miss Barlow. It's the end of the week. Your pay. Wasn't Miss Millie at the service? She was. You can you just give it to her? No, it's not my place. It's better if you do. All right, thank you. The garden is looking wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, this maze looking real ripe. Eggplant's just about ready to be picked. We can take it into town tomorrow. I sell most of my crops at the general store. You can visit Millie then. Sure thing. You know, I'm just about done here, so I'll probably pack up my stuff and head back up to camp. We're just about to sit for Sunday supper. Is that an invitation? It's the proper Sunday thing to do, Mr. Davis. Then I'd be obliged to accept. Miss Barlow, perhaps since you and I are going to share Sunday supper together, maybe we can call each other by our given names. All right. <laughs> you best wash up before you come inside. Sure thing, Ellen. Cassie, did you pick those flowers? For you, just like you asked. Hey, you wouldn't mind if I took them tomorrow when we go into town, would you? They're yours to do as you like with them. I find gardening very relaxing and enjoyable. Plant some seeds, add some water, a little sunlight, and life magically springs from the ground. That sounds so very poetic. I get what you're saying. I feel the same way. We've been wanting to expand our garden, grow some more vegetables. Might be able to help with that. The boss's remission. I suppose that would be all right. Probably just need some wildflower seeds. We'll plant around the garden. Look real nice. Who wants to say grace? I'll say it. It's my turn anyway. Mr. Davis, I mean, Clark, would that be all right with you? It's perfectly all right. Thank you for this food that we are about to receive, and thank you for our new friend, Clark. Please watch over him. Even though he doesn't much believe in you, he's still a kind and decent man. Also, please keep watch over Ma and Pa. Your friend, Cassie Barlow. Amen. See? That wasn't so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate the hospitality. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy the meal and the company, especially the company. You're quite welcome. Maybe we can do it again. It was special for Sunday. Maybe again next Sunday? Maybe. Cassie was thinking you'd be more comfortable sleeping in the barn instead of outside. There's an old cot and everything. You'd have a roof over your head. Are you sure? She asked you. Of course she's sure. <laughs> well, I, uh... I better be up early, get the squash and tomatoes picked and packed up for town. I'll help you. 
After your house chores. After my house chores? Lady, thank you all again. You're welcome. He's humming again. <laughs> yes, I, I can hear that. We should put the dishes up. Are you going to help me or am I your slave? Sleeping on the ground. Uh, they're a little wilted, but I hope she likes them. All women like flowers, wilted or not. It's the thought behind them that counts. So I'll meet y'all back here, then? We're going by the dry goods store and then a few other places. Will an hour do you? That's plenty of time. See y'all in an hour. What do you suppose those flowers are for? I don't know. Some gal, I guess. He said she. Helen, are you just curious or are you a little jealous? Jealous? Rue the day. Just curious. Let's go by the dry goods store and check on that material. And then we can go by Millie's. I'm planning it for Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, Ma? You'd best get out here. Well, you folks can get back to eating. Rose, you mind the stove? Ah, uh, these are for you. Sorry, they're, they're a bit wilted. Nothing a little fresh water can't fix. You know, I never truly apologize to you. But I am now. Well, if you feel the need, then apology accepted. These are very pretty flowers. Uh, Cassie, she picked them. You and Cassie getting along all right? Yes, ma'am. Just fine. Would you like to sit down? Maybe have a piece of pie? Oh, I, I probably shouldn't stay too long. The ladies are waiting on me, and they're doing a bit of shopping. Well, if they're shopping, it's going to be a while. Come on. Rose, would you bring me a piece of apple pie? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I also brought your payment. You are a young man of principle. My father be a man of principle and responsibility. In the old days, I would have told you to forget it. I lost a lot of money that way. Now I read the good book, and it tells me to be a cheerful giver and receiver. So I will cheerfully receive this money and give you a piece of pie. That's very kind of you. No, not really. I figured this is the only money you've got. You probably couldn't afford to pay for the pie. <laughs> Rosie, would you do me a favor and go polish the silverware? Oh, yes, ma'am. Teenage girls, full of curiosity and mischief. Life can be very confounding, Miss Millie. Something weighing on you, Clark? It is an ever-changing adventure we are on. It sure is a fact. Be diligent. Give life time. 
We never do know what's right around the corner. Well, looky who dropped in. With Clark here, I was wondering if you two were gonna stop by. Well, if I'd known he was coming here, he would've come with him. He brought me those flowers over there. Kind of an apology gift. Well, isn't that sweet? Roses in the kitchen. <laughs> Ellen, come sit. Yep, I best be uh, checking on the team. No, stay. They'll be all right. It's pretty hot outside, so I might need some water. But thank you for the pie. Looks like I run him off. He's a very nice young man. Not at all like the ones who caught that gold fever. He's responsible. It would seem that way. There's a big difference between just having a crush on somebody and truly being in love. I dried out the vegetable seeds like you said. All I have to do now is go get some wildflower seeds from the meadow. Be careful in that tall grass. Rattlers are out this time of year. The garden is gonna be great. <laughs> She's very excited about the garden. Thank you. My pleasure. You ready to plant soon? Yeah. Just keep turning the soil for a bit, add some of that dry manure from the milk cow, water it for a couple of days and plant. You sure know a lot about everything. It's basic things. You read a lot? Some. Mostly I learned from my pa. He tried to teach me to be a well-rounded man. You close to him? Very. My mom, too. You know, we had some problems when I was growing up, but nothing we couldn't get through without him shooting me. That would have been awful. And you wouldn't be here digging in the dirt and playing and draw manure. <laughs> <laughs> Your pa laugh a lot? Yeah. Mine, too. You miss him? I do. Almost every day. Sometimes I think I hear him laugh. And I turn around expecting him to be there. Silly, huh? No. Well, it's not silly. Those are memories. Memories are where our lives end up being. Your pa teach you that? And he learned it from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hang on to the good ones. Let the bad ones go. Never let them haunt us. Your move. I wouldn't move there if I were you. I know what you're thinking. Who are you? Cassie's forming an attachment. Cassie told Rose that Clark Davis reminds her of her father. I suspected as much. He'll be leaving soon. Moving on to California, following his dream. He's not like all the rest of them. What? You said so yourself. Oh, oh my. <laughs> oh, Millie. Now don't go jump into conclusions. <sighs> You're sweet on him. No, I'm not sweet on him. I don't have the time nor the inclination for such luxuries. <sighs> He's a good man. This will make it all the more difficult when he leaves. You've got to think about Cassie. She never knew her mother. She lost her father. How's she going to handle him leaving? She was going to pick some flowers and visit your folks. Talking to them gives her peace. We all could use an ounce of that from time to time. She's become really fond of you. A special young lady. Your commitment here will be over soon. Reckon it will. 
You'll be heading out west to California. <sighs> it's been the plan for a long time. I don't think it'll set well with Cassie. I don't think it's gonna set well with me either. And you? What about me? My mom always told me that person who answers a question with a question is just avoiding the first question. You must be getting hungry. I'll go fix your lunch. Do you think the Lord holds a grudge against Clark for not keeping the Sabbath? I don't think the Lord holds grudges. I think that's something we human beings are inflicted with. Wow, service. They were wonderful. Millie made bread pudding for the potluck. It was scrumptious. She asked about you. Rose did too. Cassie, go on inside and change and put some flour on the chicken. I'll be right in to mash the potatoes. Payday. Is everything all right? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. For? The money. You more than earned it. I wish it could be more. No, dude, it's fine. Um, it's Sunday. That it is. Will you be joining us for supper? Is that an invitation? Well, remember what your mother said about answering a question with a question. <laughs> yes. I'd love to join you for supper. Tidy up. I've got chicken to fry. I'll miss steam for you. next so there were daniel and i we were creeping right behind these grave robbers on this road so dark you couldn't even see your own two feet were you scared a little bit them old boys they got thirsty so they laid that corpse down the road and they headed off to the creek to get a quick train and then what happened daniel and i we grabbed that old poor dead fellow and we flung him in the ditch and then daniel gets down just like this he stretches out in that corpse's place no fooling no fooling them old boys came back. They didn't realize their corpse was a few inches shorter. And there was Daniel lying back, just like this. What did Daniel say? He said, Knock him, heavy fellas! <laughs> I was a bit rowdy in my younger days. I bet you were. Hello, Clark. Miss Millie. Is it that day already? Yes, ma'am. Time just slips by. Such a precious thing we can never get back. Seems to be going faster, too. Probably because I've been so busy. Being happy can cause time to fly, too. Yes, ma'am. So it won't be long. Won't be an indentured servant anymore? <laughs> well, I guess I never thought about it quite like that. I suppose you'd be heading west? Following your dream? I reckon. I thought about it a lot as of late. It's been my plans for a long time. Plans can change. <laughs> yes, ma'am. There, Mr. Davis. Sheriff. Sure. Got some news for you on uh, Daniel Whitaker. They hang him? Nope. Escape news this time. Got six months on a chain gang. That's good news. Could be. Or maybe they just postponed the inevitable. I'm obliged you told me. Yeah. Good seeing you at the dance the other night. Helen looked mighty pretty. 
Yes, sir. Yes, she did. Mm -hmm. Elbows acting up. Big storm brewing. Mind that old ladder. Wouldn't want you to break your neck. Very funny, Miss Cassie. Good morning, Clark. Good morning. Beautiful day, isn't it? As is. None better. You fixing the shingles? Probably take a few days to tighten them all down. Sheriff's sure predicting rain. <laughs> I think his elbow is wrong this time. For a few days. <laughs> Looks like Sheriff Holden's elbow was right again. Apparently so. Could have held off a few days so I can get those shingles fixed. Looks like the old roof's holding up just fine. What's your move? Will the stock be all right? Put them in the barn before it even started raining. getting worse. It seems that way. Oh, I knew I should have fixed that when I first got here. Where are you going? Everything I need to fix is still up on the roof. It can wait. It's raining outside. Uh, a little bit of water never hurt nothing. I have to go check the game. Clark, please, stay inside. Lightning can hurt you, especially if you're on a roof. right up there? Lord, I hope so. You need to tell him to get down. All right, I'll try. If you haven't noticed, you can be a little stubborn. the fireplace, right, Ellen? You'll stay here tonight. <clears throat> How does your head feel? Is it sore? Do you have a headache? No. Good. That's not a concussion. Cassie, will you go and fix Clark some coffee? that the good Lord who brought you here wouldn't take you away. And I prayed. And he answered. He did answer. Now, Ellen, I... Rest now.
you deliver us from evil, you allow no weapons formed against us to prosper. Thank you for protecting Clark. Clark? Are you sure you should be out of bed? How's the stock? Everything's there except the milk cow. Storm blew the door open last night. She won't go far. I'll check the meadow. I'll check the woods. She's probably ready for cover. I'll go with you. You know, her milk might be spoiled for a couple of days. Fright tends to do that to a cow. It's no matter. You're walking a little stiff. Feeling a little stiff. Yeah, sore. I was so frightened when you fell last night. I'm lucky I ain't crippled, or worse. But nothing happened. It was a miracle, plain and simple. He is faithful who promised. You know, late last night, uh, after the storm one got quiet, I said a prayer. I haven't done that in years. Clark. You know, I think I might have gotten back some of that faith I used to have. When I was a kid, my mom and pa took me to church. You never told me you used to go to church. I don't know what happened. I, I just sort of fell away from church. Last night, you kissed me on the forehead. You called me your love. I thought you were sleeping. Did you mean it? Yes. I meant it. And I mean it now. <laughs> Thanks for breaking the mood, Sarah. California? I've been thinking on it. You know, like Millie said, sometimes plans change. Something special changing those plans? Oh, All right. Run, get out, folks. Good to see you, too. How you doing? Jake Weller. What are you gonna do? I guess I should go talk to him. What will you say? I don't know. Clark, I am... No, no, it's, uh... You do what you must. Jake. Hello, Ellen. You're alive. Why would I be anything else? I never expected to see you again. Well, I told you I would come back. And that was over two years ago. Not a word from you since. I thought you were dead. Wait on Ellen. I'm gonna ride back. Don't you want to see what happens? Hey, no, no, need to see.
Hey, is Millie still in business? Um... Yes. Okay, well, let's go there. Have something to eat. We can catch up on last time. All right. We can catch up on things. I hit the big one. Enough gold to buy a small country. I bought a big, beautiful house in San Francisco, up on a hill. You can watch the Pacific Ocean all day. I'm real happy for you, Jake. Oh, well, you're gonna love it there. I can't imagine living in San Francisco. <laughs> well, neither could I, but look at me. You seem very happy and sure of yourself. Yeah, well, now I'm back, Ellie. A rich man, just like I promised. And I'm sitting across the table from you, asking you to marry me. Are you proposing? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am, Ellen Barlow. Will you marry me? I'm so sorry. Me too. I'm gonna go back up to the hill camp. I'll finish my commitment up there. I know you must be feeling confused and hurt. Could be. I'll be all right. Millie once told me there's a difference between a crush and true love. And I understand now what she meant. You told me about bad memories that can haunt. There's only room in my life for one man. And he's the man I want to marry. And that man is Clark Davis. Are you sure? I've never been more sure about anything in my entire life. Nothing I thought I wanted matters anymore. Only you. Will you marry me? <laughs> pronounce you man and wife. Son, you may kiss your bride. Clark Davis never did make it to California. He never made his fortune in gold, nor saw the Great Wall of China. Instead, he found his way to the Barlow Farm and into our lives and hearts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.